Hi, happy Tuesday, happy Tuesday. Hi guys. Waiting for everybody to join me tonight. See what video, well not what video, but what book I'm gonna read and read. Hi Nolan. Hi, you're the first one here. You're kind of like Bryson when he comes to class, he's usually the first one to join. Nyla, hi, my jazz, hi jazz. Hi guys. What have you done since you've left school? Maybe you guys can tell me that while we're waiting on everyone else to join. Rachel, hi Rachel. Is your sister watching too? I forgot her name, you have to tell me again. Bryson, hi, I just told Nolan that he beat you here. You're the first one who comes in the classroom in the mornings, but Nolan beat you on here this time. Hi, Huey. Oh, you guys are right on time. I like it, I like it. So as usual, I usually wait about three or four minutes just to allow everyone to um, join in. Do you guys have any idea of what type of book I might be reading today? I would love to see what you guys are gonna say. Jasmine, you played outside with, with who, your sisters? Whose sisters? Rachel's sisters, I'm confused. Help, lady, I need more evidence to know what you're talking about. And you guys can't see it really well, but this is the gown that I have on tonight. And who created this? And while, we waiting, while we're waiting for everyone else to join, what can you tell me about that person? What is he so great for? And what were some of the failures that he had to go through and not give up for? What was the situation where someone told him no and he had to ignore that no and continue to press on because he had a dream that he could not give up on? I see Zoe's here. Hi, Zoe. Hi, Devon, my great one from last year. Hi, Aya. Haley, okay, okay. Well, you still can tell Haley that I missed her joining in today, Rachel. Hi, Mom. I never said that before. Hi, Mom. <laughs> not Dr. Seuss. Look at the character again. It's not from Dr. Seuss. Who created Mickey Mouse? Somebody said Dr. Seuss. Dr. Seuss had a lot of great characters, but not Mickey Mouse. And he did have some people to tell him some things that if he would have given up, my entire classroom would be different. What kind of practice did you have? Yes, it was Walt Disney. What do you guys remember about him? What kind of failures did he go through? Um, for the adults that are watching, I teach my children that in order for them to be great and successful in life, that they're going to have to go through failures. So I want them to understand to not be afraid of failure, but to know that failure is going to make them greater, that they can learn something from it that will make them better. Hi, Ian. I see Walt Disney. Hi, Aliana. Hi, I'm so glad you didn't move away from me and I still get a chance to see you. I love you too, Jazz, my Jazz. Hi, Carson. Are we keeping that promise? Keep that promise on that you and I know about? I probably will wait about a minute because I've seen a lot of my great ones from this year on here and someone from Ms. Spencer's class on here. So I'm going to start in a minute, and those that are not on, they'll just have to watch and catch up since the video will be left up here. Disney, love you too, Nolan. What do you guys remember about Walt Disney? Does anybody remember what people told him about his characters? I'm anxious to see that. And if not, we'll just talk about it again tomorrow. So thank you guys for joining me in my reading adventure. I like for this to be an interactive process. I don't want to be just talking and reading. I want you to comment. I want you to ask questions. I want you to answer questions that I ask. As a matter of fact, that's the homework for my students. Instead of me giving them a different assignment, their homework is to answer at least three of the questions that I asked tonight. 
Um, adults, if you have any questions at the end of this or throughout, feel free to ask. If you have any comments, I would love it if you guys would share it with your friends and family members that might have children anywhere from pre-K up to eighth grade because research says that children should still have books read to them all the way up through eighth grade so that they, you're modeling the reading and comprehension strategies and the joy for reading. So the book that I'm going to work on tonight, we always use pictures. The reason that you use pictures if you're reading a picture book is because they're going to help you to understand the author's message. And I do see here, yes, Bryson, you're right. The first person told him that his characters were boring. And if, if, if Walt Disney would have given up on that, we would not have any of those characters that were created by him. We wouldn't have Disney World. We wouldn't have Disneyland if he would have given up. So yes, yes, I see Nyla had that, yes. And I see Aya said that people didn't like what he came up with. And adults, those are the types of things that I talk to my students about every day. We look at someone who is great. We've talked about Michael Phelps. We've talked about, um, goodness, I can't even think of the gymnast names. God, my great ones, help me. The gymnast that we've talked about, and we saw a video of her practicing at one point, and she was really, really, really good, and then she got better. I can't think of her name right now. You guys are going to have to help me with that. Um, so using the pictures, that is something that's going to help you with the comprehension. If you don't have pictures that you can look at, you can visualize, use your five senses to help you to understand what would it look like? What would it feel like? What would it sound like? What would it taste like? What would it feel like? All of those are going to be things that are going to help you with understanding. Yes, Simone Biles. Thank you so much, Nola. We've talked about her and lots of other people and their failures and the steps that they had to take in order to be the successful, great one that we we're talking about that have made history or whatever they have done. Additional to using the pictures and visualizing is to ask questions. Maybe you have a question and you can ask that out loud. And as you read, you're going to look to see if you can get an answer to that question, making connections. I have my connector on here. My Nyla makes connections for any and everything that I'm talking about. And she makes deep connections that even I'm like, oh, wow, how did you come up with that? And something that I would like to talk about tonight, I did it a little bit last week, is the character traits. And at the end of this, adults, there's a song that I taught my kids, and it, it talks about what character traits are. And I'll put a link to that when I finish this video. But we're going to analyze the characters in here. So we're going to analyze the characters by what the author says, and if the author doesn't say anything, by the character's actions and by the character's thoughts. Usually we do that with the main character, but there are a couple of characters in here that I would like to use for that. So my book for tonight is Crafty Chloe. And as I look at Crafty Chloe, I can see that she's got some materials here. I see that she has scissors around her neck. I see crafty things hanging all around. I see that she has something on her dog and her dog doesn't really like it. I see lots of different materials that she has all over her. I guess this is her bedroom. We'll have to figure out the setting. Great ones from this year. Does this remind you of someone in our class? that is very crafty and is always creating something. I would love to see who you guys think it is. Who is the person that is the craftiest one in our class? When I saw this book online, I immediately thought of that person and I'm gonna wait until see if you guys, yep, Lily, Nolan, you were the first one. Lily, this reminds you me of you. And when I was reading this, with Miss Lawrence in the classroom the other day, when I was reading it, I made a mistake. And instead of saying Chloe, I even said Lily. I wonder if you're going to think this is anything about like you, Lily. Well, I see a bunch of scissors. So I guess she must use scissors. Maybe she does lots and lots of cutting. Everybody said Lily. Yes, Lily is definitely our crafty one. Crafty Co Chloe by Kelly DiPiccio, illustrated by Heather Ross. This is Chloe.
Do you guys see this? Chloe, Chloe isn't very good at sports. Video games never were her thing. I think it's hers. This might be you, Nolan. And when she took dance lessons, she had the grace of a camel in roller skates. This is the perfect chance for you guys to visualize. Visualize a camel with roller skates on. What do you see? What Chloe is very good at is making stuff. Yep, I'm gonna make a text to self connection. I have a student named Lily who is always making something. She made me an elephant over the weekend, not this past weekend, but over a weekend. She created an elephant for me that was three dimensional. I still have it standing up in my classroom. And not only did she make the elephant, but she also made hay for the elephant. And she made mud for the elephant. And she made food for the elephant. Just yesterday, a student brought in a fan. And I admired her fan because it was blue and it was my favorite color and I swung it open. Later on that day, Lily made me a blue fan. And if you guys were to go back on the page, Lily is the one that I believe I was speaking about students letting their light shine within them. And Lily ended up creating with paper, with notebook paper, three-dimensional letters, I am light, and I posted a picture of that. She is my crafty one. She knows that a whole new outfit can be made out of dad's old shirts. Hope you're not doing that, Lily. And that coffee filters make very good flower hats for show and tell. And that anything becomes less boring with googly eyes. I wonder if that's her brother. I know Lily has some brothers. So Lily, you might be, a make, be able to make a text to self connection, not only with the crafts, but also with the fact that you have younger brothers. Oh, I see here Ian was talking about the post I am light. Yep. I think the dog is used to Lily making things. The dog's got one eye open looking at her like, what are you about to do? Oh, look at all the things she's made. She sews things too. Chloe is very good at making clothes. Her dog, Bert, pictured here. That's something that she's made. And here, something else she's made. And here is very good at wearing them. So I talked about character traits. What are some of Chloe's character traits? Definitely creative. Anything else that she might be? Bet she has to be pretty patient in order to make those things. What do you think, Lily, since you're my crafty one? What would you say would be a character trait of someone who's always making these things? Even when we have free time in the classroom, maybe we're around dancing, Lily's always making something. Hmm. Looks like she's in a store reaching for a doll. One day, Chloe went shopping to look for a birthday present for her best friend, Emma. You guys can immediately visualize your best friend and what you might buy for your best friend if it were her or his birthday. She looked at diaries and drumsticks, jewelry boxes and jump ropes, but nothing seemed just right when Chloe saw her. Violet, of course! All Emma ever talked about was her flower girl dolls. She had all of them, except the new girl, Chloe. Well, this kind of reminds me of one of my students, Nevaeh, who has a bunch of Shopkins, and she keeps giving me the Shopkins. That's my text to self-connection. 
Okay. So she's reaching up and she's getting the doll. She took her dog to the store with her, but hmm. According to the pictures, it looks like something might be about to happen. Something might be going on here that's not going to be too good. Looking at some of the comments, creative, is this loving, crafty, Chloe reached for the doll and felt a tap on her shoulder. She turned around and there was London. Well, at first I thought London was the doll, but since they said that she felt a tap on her shoulder, it can't be the dog. Oh, maybe it's the dog's owner. But as I look at this right here, I know who would love this. I haven't seen her come in yet, I don't think, but Aya would definitely love this because she likes horses. Oh, this must be London. Look at London's face. It doesn't look too kind. With her arms wrapped around Violet, oh no, she has the doll that Lily wants. <laughs> I did it. I called her Lily. <laughs> that Chloe wants to get. If you're looking for a gift for Emma, she said extra sweetly, I already found the perfect one. Oh no. Well, it looks like Chloe's like, well, I don't really care. Chloe's, Chloe's smile faded. She shrugged, pretending not to care. That's okay, because I'm going to make her something special that you can't even buy in a store. How does London feel about this? Look at her face. Is that a nice, kind face? Looks kind of rude to me. You're going to make her something? London cried in disbelief. She wrinkled up her nose as if Chloe had just announced she was going to give Emma a jar of pickles for her birthday. Yeah, she's not too kind. Chloe stood there feeling like a dried up glue stick. What does that mean? I want you guys to visualize that this is happening, that you saw this perfect pet present for your best friend and someone else is getting it. And then you say, well, that's okay. I've got another idea. I'm going to make her something or whatever it is that you would like to do. And the person's looking at you like, what? How would you feel? She didn't know what to say. It's going to be purple, came out of her mouth. London made a snorty laugh. Well, good luck with that. What will Lily do? Think about what you know about Lily. What has the author already told you about Lily? I keep saying Lily. <laughs> I told you. What is, I might just call it Lily. Now, parents, something that we do tell the kids that if there is a name that they cannot read, I mean, maybe they wouldn't be able to read Chloe when they're reading, especially if it's a passage for a test. Instead of them spending so much time trying to figure out the name, we tell them just to call it any name that they want. And it seems like that my brain keeps calling it Lily because I know how crafty my Lily is. But anyway, what do you know about Chloe? What has the author already told you about Chloe? What is she going to do? I can't wait to see your comments. Let me see what I, what's going on here. Yeah, I would feel sad. Oh, Aya, you are here. Did you see the horse? Said you would ignore them, sad. Nyla's crying, unconfident. There's those words that I'm talking about, Huey. Artistic, yes, yes, yes. Okay. How does Lily feel? How does Chloe feel? That afternoon, Chloe stared hopelessly into her pile of crafts. Have you guys ever felt hopeless about something? Something that you really felt like that you could not do? But you know the rule of my class. Can't say I can't. Never say can't. What should you say instead? I want to see. What have I told you guys to say? Instead of saying can't, I'm waiting for it. So she's thinking. 
A macaroni necklace? A macaroni necklace? Nah. A coffee mug? Nah. This thing looks kind of funny. A sock? A sock monkey? Definitely not. Nothing she thought of seemed more perfect than the violet doll. Is she going to give up? There you go, Jazz. I can, I will, I must. Nolan said it too. I can, I will, I must. Yes, that's what you guys have got to say. Yes, Zoe. Zoe, I can. Exactly. Chloe came downstairs for dinner a few hours later, covered in blue spots. She placed the well get well card she made for herself on the table. Why in the world would she have a get well card? Why does she have blue dots and why does her mom have something stuck in her eye? I'm confused and so is her dog. We can look at the dog's face. He's confused about what's going on right here. Chloe's father raised his eyebrows. And she's like, are you really sick? Chloe's mother checked her for a fever. I don't think that's the right way to check in her eye, but mom's really busy. She's on the phone. She's preparing dinner. She's got a baby to look after. Chloe's brother spit out his green beans. Why is she pretending to be sick? What happened? Yes, yes. Huey, she is acting like she's sick. She's be bewildered and confused. Are you talking about the dog, Jazz? That dog is not buying it. I think the dog is around her so much that he knows they're not sick. And Bert, pictured here and here and here, made faces. Make all the faces you like, Chloe groaned. I have chicken pops, and I can't go to the party tomorrow. Oh, this immediately makes me think of the unicorn jazz song. Do you guys remember it? It makes me think of it. Do you remember it? Be happy with your light. You are bold. You shine so bright, a golden ray. You're my sunshine. Let nothing give you fright. You are strong. Your heart is kind in every day. You're my heart's desire. Oops. I have the picture here. You guys remember this one that a couple weeks ago? That would be my text-to-text -text connection. So she's visualizing this. She's visualizing riding on the unicorn. I wonder if this is something that will happen, happen in the party. <laughs> what a shame, her mother said. Emma's such a good friend, and you'll miss the pony rides. The pony turn! Chloe had forgotten all about the pony, and Emma really was a good friend. Luckily for Chloe, her chicken pops were washable. What do you think that means, that they were washable, her chicken pops were washable? What does that mean? Oh, hi, Leilani. You're back. <laughs> I'll be glad when you come back to school. I miss you. And you're singing. After dinner. Oh, wait. Let's look at the pictures here. I think she's creating something. Oh, look. I see her with the glue gun, like what I use. And there's a bag. It looks like she's asleep. I think she finally gave up with an attitude. She didn't give up. She kept thinking and she kept thinking and she kept thinking and she finally came up with it. Maybe she said in her head too, I can, I will, I must, I can, I will, I must. Maybe she kept saying those things and it happened because she believed she could do it. After dinner, Chloe went to her room to doodle. Doodling helps her think. I guess doodling is kind of like drawing on paper. Let me see if that word would fit. After dinner, Chloe went to her room to draw. Drawing made her think. Yep, I think that works. Thinking gives her ideas. 
Some ideas are pretty spectacular and require lots of glitter. Chloe worked late into the night. Is anybody helping her or is she doing it by herself? She's doodling by herself. She's cutting by herself. She's sewing by herself. Yes, she has the dog there, but she's doing it by herself. Just like all the people that we've seen doing their trainings and things, they were doing it by themselves. Gluing and painting and sewing. When she finished, she stood back and admired her work. She liked it, but with Emma, then she went to sleep. So mom encouraged her not to give up. She's like, oh, it's too bad if you don't go, but she had to get to work by herself. Looking at your comments, markers, markers. They will wash off. She is creating different things. She used marker. Oh, and Lily, you did say she was doing it by herself, and I think you said that before I did. Uh, let's look at them. So more uh, character traits, even though she got sad, she was determined. She was independent, meaning that she could do it by herself. Now let's look here. See some balloons. See presents. Where are they going? What's happening right here? And London, we already know, was not very kind. What would be a character trait for London right here? Look at her face. How is Chloe feeling? Does she feel confident? The next day, Chloe walked to Emma's house carrying a very big box. London clicked the head of her in sparkly heels, swinging her gift. And they both got their dogs with them. Click, 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 trip! London fell. The gift bag flew. And Violet flop. These dots here mean that the sentence is not completely finished. Oh no. Mm, we got a problem here, you know. In lots of these books, people who are not nice and kind do not have nice and kind things to happen to them. Sassy, I like that word. Someone said, don't let go of the balloons. Zeke said, yep, they're going to the party, they're going to the party. Yes, it does look like she's a little bit scared, Jazz. Right into a puddle, splash! London grabbed Violet. London's little dog grabbed Violet too. London roared, drop it! The dress ripped, the dog ran. Not only did the dog get all muddy, and now the dress is ripped, we have a problem. I need some predictions for the solution. Karma, yes, Huey, I love the words. Keep it up. Mean, selfish, rude, mean, yes. So what do you guys think is gonna happen now? We're gonna need some predictions. What's gonna happen? Her present, the perfect present, because this is what Emma wanted, is ruined. I need some predictions. So she's sitting here in the mud. She's muddy. The dress is the uh, doll is muddy. He doesn't have any clothes. What am I going to do? London wailed. I can't give Emma a naked doll. More than all the googly eyes in the world. Chloe wanted to say, well, good luck with that. Because that's what London had said to her. But instead, she lifted the lid on her box and pulled out a perfectly purple dress. This is what she created, guys. This is what she created. It says she was good at sewing. I think she's... Probably a really good girl. What's she going to do with this dress? She's bossy, embarrassed, cleaned it off. Dress is going to rip.
She gave her dress to London to put on the doll. London reached for the dress. Did you really make that? She squealed. It's adorable. Corey's eyes lit up like limestones. Stones. My grandma taught me how to sew. Oh, this reminds me of you, Nyla, because you say your grandma's going to teach you how to crochet, she said proudly. The girls dressed Violet in her new dress. She's a really good girl. That was a really nice thing to do. I guess this is them looking into the bag. London peeked inside the box. Whoa, did you make that too? Chloe nodded again. Do you think Emma will like it? London smiled. I think she's going to love it. Oh, this must be Emma. And she did. So look what else did she made. It says, P.S. I made it myself, Chloe. And that's the end. So, in this book, we really do get a chance to see how crafty Chloe is. And in this book, she wanted to buy the perfect gift for her friend. But it turns out that she used the greatness that was inside of her her ability to be crafty and artsy to make things. And it made a wonderful dress and a bed for her. Now that's something that crafty Chloe could do. She's really good at being artsy. But what are the rest of you good at? Part of your homework tonight as we prepare for the runathon, and I think I said that wrong, I asked you guys to tell me what is great about you because as we make our flag, you guys are going to have to put that on your flag. So you should be thinking about what is great about you. You guys have lots of greatness in you. And I don't have time to talk about everyone, but a lot of times I talk about my connector and then my Nyla how she does such a wonderful job of connecting things. And my Chris, who's not watching right now, I call her my assistant because whenever I need something, almost before I can think of it, she's on it trying to find it. A wonderful example of that was yesterday another teacher, Zoe, your teacher, came in looking for a vase because a student had brought her flowers. And I went to the back of the classroom to find a vase that I had back there. And before I could even get to the back of the classroom, Chris was walking around with a vase that my other great one, Aubrey, had given me. And I didn't even think about that one. And I have another one on here that's really good at seeing another student that might have a problem, and he jumps to help that, and that's my Zeke. Everyone has something great on the inside of them. Each and every person in here has a greatness that is only in you. And yesterday, we were talking about Gandhi. And he has a quote, and I've written it down. It says, live as if you were to die tomorrow. Learn as if you were to live forever. And Lily gave the most wonderful example of what that meant. Lily, if you can remember and type it, because I can't remember, but she said something about sharing your goodness with the world. Like I said, I don't remember exactly what she said. It was so wonderful. I had her to um, repeat it. And I needed to record it. Lily, if you could type it down there, that would be wonderful. But you guys all have something great in you that you need to share with the world. Like I said, Walt Disney, one of his characters was Mickey Mouse. I think that may have been his original character. I'm not sure. And in the beginning, when he first presented his ideas, someone said, oh, that's boring. If he would have listened to him or her, probably him at that time, we wouldn't have all the greatness. So a song that's in my heart. It's just do you. I heard a voice that told me I'm essential. How all my fears were limiting my potential. Said it's time to step into the light and use every bit of the power I had inside. And so what you're waiting on, 
who you waiting for if you don't take a chance you'll never know what's in store just do you somebody's got to be a star just do you somebody's got to raise the bar just do you somebody's got to change the game just do you today i need you guys to do that your greatness what you have to tell me about and adults and all of us we all have something special that's on the inside of us but my great ones I need you to think about that because we've got to put that on the flag any other students in here zoe if you see me tomorrow you can tell me the greatness that's in you lily from Ms. bush's class i don't know that if you're watching but if you are you can tell me and anyone else from the school something that i always do before i go i need you guys to think of one thing that makes you happy um, if you're watching me for the first time this is something that i do with my students every day when they come in in the morning they have to write one thing that they're happy about and then they also have to write one thing that they did that they are proud of not just i'm proud that it's sunday or monday no something that you did and they have to write that down so i want you to get the thing that you're happy about and i want you to get the thing that you're proud of and i want you to get both of those in your heads lots of times when my students are having a hard time with something and they learn something i grab their heads and i say lock that in your head i want you to lock it in your head or i want you to write it down here or write it down in your journal so you can go back and look at it at a later time so you've got it in your head the thing that you are happy about the thing that you did that you are proud of the thing that makes you great and different than everyone else just like crafty chloe i want you to inhale i want you to exhale and i want you to smile you're beautiful Thank you for watching. See you next week.